In this video, we're going to complete example two. And what you'll notice with these equations are they're full of fractions. Now we're going to be completing four examples here. We can see questions A and B. And on the next slide, we have question C and D. And once again, full of fractions. Now, as I've mentioned before, fractions are a pain to work with. And the best way to deal with them is to multiply. So we'll start with question A. What should we multiply these terms by in order to cancel both the 2 and the 3? Now, in order to cancel the 2, I would multiply by 2. And in order to cancel the 3, I would multiply by 3. So we're actually going to multiply by both 2 and 3. Now, just to be clear, multiplying by 2 and by 3 is the same as multiplying by 6, because 2 times 3 is 6. But I'm going to write it as 2 times 3, except for the 5, I'm going to write it as 6, because that's the same thing. In each case, I'm multiplying by 6, which is the same as multiplying by 2, then 3. Now, when we do this for the first fraction, the 2s are going to cancel, and we're left with x times 3, which gives us 3x. For the second fraction, the 3s are going to cancel, which leaves us with 2 times x, which is 2x. And for the third term, the 5, we're just going to multiply it by 6, which, as I said before, is the same as multiplying 5 by 2 and then 3. Anyway, we can simplify this now. 3x minus 2x is just x. And we're left with x equals 30, which has turned out really well. All right, we'll now move on to question B. Once again, our main focus here is to get rid of those fractions, to get rid of these denominators here. And to do that, I need to multiply by 5, 3, and 4. Because I need to cancel out a 5, a 3, and a 4. Now, when you multiply by 5, by 3 and by 4, that's the same as just multiplying by 60. Because 5 times 3 times 4 is 60. But I'm going to write it still as 5 by 3 by 4. It just helps with the cancelling. So for the fraction 1 over 3, I'm going to multiply that by 5, by 3 and by 4. And for my fraction y over 4, I'm also going to multiply that by 5, by 3 and by 4. Now for the number 5, I can simply write times 60, which is the same as writing times 5, times 3 and times 4. So we'll start with the first fraction, y over 5. We can see that the 5s will cancel, but not the 3 and the 4. So y times 3 times 4, 3 times 4 is 12 which when multiplied by y is 12y. For the second fraction, the 3s will cancel, and we're left with 1 times 5 times 4, and that's just 20. So we're going to write plus 20, and then the equal sign. And then 5 times 60 is just 300. So write down 300. And for our final term and final fraction, the 4s will cancel. And we're left with y times 5 times 3. Now, 5 times 3 is 15. And then we've got our y, so we're going to write minus 15y. Now, we got rid of all our fractions, which makes everything so much easier. So what do I do next? Well, I want to get rid of this minus 15y because I only want my pronumerals on the left-hand side. This means I have to add 15y on the left-hand side as well, but it's going to cancel out the 15y on the right. Now, 15y plus 12y will give us 27y. We've still got our plus 20 and we still have our 300. Now, I want to isolate that 27y, so I'm going to subtract the 20 on both sides so that I can cancel out the 20. And now I have 27y equals 280. 
Now I need to simply divide both sides by 27 so that I get y on its own. What is 280 over 27? Well, to be perfectly honest, 280 over 27 doesn't actually simplify, and I prefer to leave them as improper fractions. So I'm actually going to leave that as my response for question B. All right, let's now move on to question C. We've got three fractions here, and we want to get rid of these denominators. We want to get rid of 3a, 3, and 4a. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by a, by 3, and by 4. Because what that will do is it will cancel out a's, it will cancel out 3's, and it will cancel out 4's. Which means we will cancel out all the denominators. So every single term needs to be multiplied by a, 3, and 4. And it's quite hard to fit this on the page, but I'm going to do my best times a times 3 and times 4. So we'll start with the very first fraction. Our denominator is 3a. So we're going to cancel out both our a's and our 3's. We're left with 1 times 4. That's going to simplify very nicely. We get 4. Next we have 10 times a times 3 times 4. Now, 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 times 10 is 120. So we go minus 120, and then we're going to put the a next to that because we're timesing by a as well. Then we have the equal sign, and we've got 2 thirds times a times 3 times 4. So the 3s will cancel, leaving us with 2 times a times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And then we have the a, so we have 8a. For our next fraction, our 4s will cancel and our a's will cancel, leaving us with 3 times 3, which is 9. So we have plus 9. Now, if I was to subtract 8a on the right and then subtract 8a on the left, I'm going to be left with negative 128a. And I prefer not to have negatives if I can help it. So what I will do instead is I'm, I'm going to add 120a. I'm going to cancel the 120a on the left, which means I have to also add 120a on the right. 120a plus 8a will give me 128a. I've still got the plus 9, and I still have the 4 to the left of the equal sign. I would like 128a on its own, so I'm going to subtract the 9 on both sides just so that I can cancel out the plus 9. 4 minus 9 is negative 5, so I've got negative 5 equals 128a. And next I'm going to divide both terms by 128 so that I can isolate the a. I'm getting rid of the 128 here leaving me with a being equal to negative 5 over 128. Now this fraction cannot be simplified, so I'm going to leave my response to question C like so. We'll now move on to question D. Once again, I want to get rid of these fractions. I need to cancel out these denominators. Now, I don't really want to multiply all four numbers. I don't want to multiply 4, 6, 3, and 12, because that's going to make a really large number, and it's really unnecessary. I actually only need to multiply by 12. Why is that? Well, think about it. 12 can be made by multiplying 4 by 3, or it could be made by multiplying 6 by 2. So I can pick either one of these three expressions here, because all of them are the same as multiplying by 12. So for the last fraction, I would multiply that by 12 because that's going to cancel the 12. For the first fraction, I would multiply that by 4 and 3 because the 4s will cancel. 
For the second fraction, I need a 6, so I'm going to pick the 6 times 2. I'm going to multiply it by 6 and 2. And for the third fraction, I'm going to multiply by 4, then 3 again. All four fractions have been multiplied by the same thing. They've all been multiplied by 12, just kind of in a different way in each case. So we'll start with the first fraction. The 4s are going to cancel, which means we're simply multiplying 2x minus 1 by 3. Now when we write that down, the 2x minus 1 needs to be put in brackets because we're multiplying the whole expression 2x minus 1 by 3. So we need to put the 3 outside the brackets. For the second fraction, we're going to cancel the 6s and we're going to multiply the whole expression 3x plus 2 by 2. That means that the 2 needs to go outside the brackets and 3x plus 2 must be inside the brackets. Next we have our equal sign. When we multiply 2 over 3 by 4 then 3, the 3s will cancel. 4 times 2 is 8. And finally the 12s will cancel on the last fraction which gives us x minus 3. Now we have to be very careful here. Notice that we're subtracting x minus 3. We really need to put that x minus 3 in brackets because we're subtracting that whole expression. All right, now we've made some really great progress here because we got rid of all those denominators, but we're left with some brackets. So we need to expand our brackets next. We'll start with the first set of brackets. 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times 1 is 3. So we need to write minus 3. Let's look at the second set of brackets. We've got positive 2 times 3x, so we get plus 6x, and positive 2 times positive 2, so we get plus 4. After our equal sign, we've got our 8. What do we do in the situation where we've got a negative or a minus sign in front of our brackets? Well, we need to remember that technically when there's no number, there's a number 1. So we're going to multiply negative 1 by x and negative 1 by negative 3. Negative 1 times x will give us minus 1x, or just minus x. And negative 1 times negative 3 gives us plus 3. There are so many people who complete a question like this one who write minus 3 here when it needs to be plus 3. Anyway, I'm going to do some simplifying here. I can combine some like terms. 6x plus 6x will give me 12x. And negative 3 plus 4, which is the same as 4 minus 3, will give me plus 1. On the right-hand side, I've got a positive 8 and a plus 3, so 8 plus 3 is 11, and then I have minus x. Next, I would like to get rid of this minus x because I don't want two sets of pronumerals. So I'm going to add x on both sides to cancel out the minus x. Now, 12x plus x is just 13x. So we get 13x plus 1 equals 11. Next, we'll subtract the 1 on both sides, just so that we can cancel the plus 1, giving us 13x equals 10. And finally, we divide both terms by 13, so that we can cancel the 13, giving us x equals 10 over 13, and we can't simplify that any further. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.